So I recently made a video where I did one of these front end mentor challenges and I'm not, I, I'm not like sponsoring this company or anything. I just think this is a really useful tool. If you're trying to become a front end engineer and you want to kind of practice your skills and get better at making things, I think one of the best ways you can better your front end engineering craft is to actually build more things that would, you would actually see in the wild, right? So if you log into the site and go to the challenges, there's a bunch of different challenges that you have access to. And if I do filter by and go to like free and then go to like newbie, depending on your skill level, this is one I did like a couple days ago or yesterday, but there's a lot of other things that you could potentially practice with, right? There's a QR code component. There's like a little card. Um, there's this, there's stuff like this. And my recommendation for a beginner is like, if you can't look at this picture and build the exact or close to the exact representation using CSS and HTML, then I don't think you're really ready yet to start diving into the JavaScript side of things, the interactivity side of things. You definitely aren't ready for React, in my opinion. Um, that's my hot take on that. But if you can't like look at this simple little panel and just kind of in your head think, okay, how do would I build this? How do I build this out? Well, it's probably an image. The panel has some border radius here, 50, you know, 20 pixels or whatever. Um, you know, this might have some font size at 18. There might be some colors. This has some text aligned center or text, um, yeah, text aligned center. And then if you look over here, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Like, how do I build this little thing? Well, it's probably a div that has the background color of like a gray with some border radius as well. And then you got like a little image with that's wrapped in a div or something that has again, border radius of 50% to make it round. Um, got a link here. You got a button here. You got a cancel order. So what I'm trying to say is that if you aren't able to look at something like this and build it out with HTML and CSS, you really should practice. You really should get better at it because building out anything more complex in the front end is just going to basically be super hard for you if you can't do some of these simpler challenges. Like, like something like this, like you're going to learn how to do a lot of um, like flex box. Like how, how would you make a row? You kind of just look at this. You can tell, okay, this is like a, a row or a div. And this div probably has like a display of flex and it has three items that are probably spaced kind of evenly or maybe text aligned left or maybe they're using CSS grid and they have three columns and they just text aligned the, the content of every column to the left. So like you should be able to see things and just like know the different CSS properties that you would probably need to apply to get this working. Like how do you get this image to the right versus this, this panel to the left. So doing so, some challenges like this really help you understand like how layout works with HTML and CSS, how you know you can style input boxes, how you can maybe add some validation coloring to this stuff. Like when there's an error on this form, how do you make the outline of this stuff red? How do you maybe put an alert here? And that could potentially get me more into like the interactivity and JavaScript side of things. I think if you can do some of these newbie things and not have to like spend the whole day trying to figure out how to do this, then I think you're kind of in good shape. Like, how do you make this little card here have like a background? Well, that's probably like a box shadow with a certain amount of properties. And again, you can look some of this stuff up if you don't really know, like right here, it looks like there's a box shadow there on the button. So this looks like it could be a flex box with like a column direction. And then it has two divs inside of that. And the bottom div has again, a flex box of a normal um, flow. So that's my recommendation. Again, you don't have to necessarily use this, this challenge site. You could actually go and try to find like any type of inspiration. You could even go to like Dribble. Dribble is a great place to get like inspiration and just like pick any of these websites and say, you know what, can I build this myself? Can I figure out how to build this? Um, if I were to have access to the images, I might have to actually sign up to be able to get access to some of this stuff. But like, usually they have like a preview page and you can probably right click on the images or try to figure out like the, what the background source are to some of these images and you can download them and just try to replicate exactly what they have. I think a lot of people in this day and age, um, especially beginners, they don't put in the time to figure out how to build these widgets. They probably just go to like Flowbyte and they try to find like an existing footer and they literally have no idea how to build this, right? They just probably copy this code and paste it in and they're like, oh, I have a footer now. But do they really understand like what's going on with these Tailwind styles? I hope they do. Uh, my personal recommendation is if you're going to copy and paste code, spend time to try to understand what the code's doing because you're just going to shoot yourself in the foot by just copying and pasting code all the time. And you really have no idea what you're doing. You're just same thing with like material UI. let's just kind of show off some different um, component libraries. Like if you're at this point, the, the reason we use these component libraries is because as 
more experienced engineers, we don't want to waste all this time building out these widgets, right? We don't want to have to dive into the CSS and the HTML to build out an alert because we've done it so many times and it's very tedious. And there's a lot of things that you need to keep in mind, like accessibility. How do you make sh sure this thing has like good contrast that you can actually tap through stuff? You can use a screen reader through it. And there's a lot that goes into the components, right? So we want to make sure that we are using components that are made by a team that actually know how to build accessible, nice looking components. And that's why we use them. But again, as a beginner, your goal is to learn and understand what's going on. So it's good to like make sure you feel like you're pretty solid on like the foundations of like how, how would I build an accordion by hand? How would I build some type of card by hand? How would I do, um, you know, layouts? Like if you just look at this, this site as an example, it's a three grid layout. Do you know how to build that three grid layout with CSS with a sticky header and a sticky sidebar? right? With a scrollable sidebar. Can you build this all out with CSS by yourself? If you can't, um, I highly recommend that you look into it and at least try to build it once. Um, now I will say that even me, like I would probably struggle building out a, like this exact layout that we're looking at here. Cause it's been so long since I've had to, you know, build stuff at the component level because I always just use like a component library, but I have in the past built out pages with just plain CSS and HTML. So I know I could easily figure it out and learn it again without being too confused about like, what does a CSS flex property do? What does CSS grid do? For anyone who's trying to become a front end developer, you got to get good at CSS. In my opinion, you got to get good at HTML and understand how this stuff all works. And it's funny because I've had people ask me like on my discord in my comments, like how important do you think learning CSS is? I think it's super important, right? If you don't know how the styling behind the web pages works and you can't really like overlook the basics of CSS because there's going to be a time where someone at your company or your business, there's going to be a requirement that comes in that you got to like customize the look and feel of something. And it's going to take you a long time to figure stuff out because you just skipped over the basics versus if you have a good solid foundation of CSS, customizing this stuff and understanding how to read through style sheets and understanding how to potentially read through like SAS and how like the cascade works behind the scenes, it's just going to put you in a better position to be more proficient at your job. So anyway, that's all I really want to say. Um, I do think CSS is super important for a beginner to understand, and they need to build some components by hand by themselves to make sure they have that um, foundation. So if you enjoyed my little talk, be sure to subscribe, comment, press the bell icon, like, whatever. Also, there is a link to a newsletter in my uh, description that you can click if you want to subscribe and just get some tips and tricks. Uh, about react and web development in the future and there's also a discord channel have a place for people to go and ask questions if they're stuck other than that hope this was useful have a good day and happy coding